Hello fellow humans, I'm Peter Bois. This is probably the most requested video I have ever gotten. Welcome to my live stream setup tour. So I'm a magician and I travel all over the country performing for tens of thousands of people every year live and in person. And when the pandemic hit, a year ago, everything started canceling, right? I mean, my show started canceling, basketball started getting canceled, hockey, everything was canceled, and uh, doing magic shows is how I make my living, and it was a terrible time. It felt like everything I was working for in my life, uh, in my career, was going down the tube in just a few days. And I made a joke on Facebook that I was gonna do magic shows over Skype and asked if anyone wanted a book. It was a joke but I started to think about it even harder and it just stuck in my head and that's when I started to put together my live stream magic show. And within two weeks I was doing my first paid magic shows over live stream and I've been doing them ever since and I wanna give you the behind the scenes of how I get my show to everybody across the world. So let's get into it. I tour in person with two different shows. One of them, Magician for Non-Believers, comedy magic show. The second one is called Summoning Spirits, creepy ghost stories combined with freaky magic that will make you scream. The first show I brought into a live stream setup was uh, the Magician for Non-Believers show and I'm gonna show you that first. Uh, and then I'll show you uh, the tech setup for the Summoning Spirit show. 95% of the tech for everything is the same with a couple of differences which uh, I'll get to when we go over the summoning spirits part. So right from the start, I knew I wanted a two scene, three camera setup. I wanted a place to perform standing up, and I knew I wanted a place to perform sitting down. So that means I needed a camera switcher, and the first one that came to mind was the Blackmagic ATEM Mini. For 300 bucks, this thing is a beast. It has four HDMI inputs, two audio inputs, uh, internal keyer, upstream keyer and a downstream keyer. Besides my computer, this is the heart of my setup. I have three cameras going into the switcher. The fourth is connected to my computer. My computer sees it as just another monitor. I also have this connected to my home network via the ethernet cable. The cameras going into the switcher are the Canon XF400, Canon XA40, and my older Canon G30. A great camera is nothing without great lighting. My main light is a large soft box I got off of Amazon years ago. It came with three in the package and it was, I don't know, around $100, $150, and I have used them a ton over the years. Moving over to my close-up scene, I have two diffused LED light panels. These are Supon L122Ts, which I bought off of Amazon. I love these little lights because they are very affordable and fantastic. They can be powered by a battery or plug into a power outlet. They have intensity adjustment from 20 to 100%, and you can change the color temperature of the lights from 3300 to 5600K. They can be mounted on a mic stand, camera tripod, or attached to your camera's hot shoe. Then behind me, I have an IKEA lamp and lampshade. Simple, it's just a simple <laughs> lamp. Uh, and uh, this, this is uh, an IKEA bookshelf. This was here before I was doing live stream shows. These are actually my magic books <laughs> that I have in here. And uh, so I had to make use of this space the best way I could because this is attached to the wall and I had nowhere else for it. Uh, and also I found this uh, applause sign online and I think, it looks, uh, I think it looks good because I don't get applause in here, I get emoji applause. So uh, it's just a little kind of a fun, uh, a fun joke for myself and anyone that notices it uh, during the show. My background for my stand-up scene are just blackout curtains I got from Target. They're just regular house curtains and they're held they're held up through uh, regular pipes from uh, a pipe and drape setup. Lighting the backdrop are four hamster lights and a Charvet Slimpar 56. Just as important as great looking video is great sounding audio. And there are a couple different ways you could go with this. One of them would be a shotgun mic. Uh, I first started using a Countryman headset, but I didn't like the sound I was getting out of it. I wanted more of a uh, room sound, and that's why I started going with the lavalier. Uh, that's what I'm wearing right now. I'm using the Sennheiser EW100 G3 uh, belt pack and receiver. I didn't go with a shotgun mic because I was moving between two scenes and I wanted to make sure I had consistent audio no matter where I was moving to. So that's why I went with an on-body microphone. Connected to my computer, I have a 15-key stream deck 
that helps me control my show and fire cues. But the main way I fire cues is with this remote control. This is a MediaStar uh, remote control. Uh, this plugs into the computer and this goes in my pocket. You press a button, it fires a cue. It's very, very simple. Uh, this is an extremely handy remote to have. I run my show from my late 2016 MacBook Pro. Connected to the MacBook is a USB-C hub with an HDMI out. On the other side, I have a CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 mini dock with dual HDMI outputs. I love this dock so much, it's so hard to find a dock with two HDMI outputs. Connected to one of those HDMI outputs on the CalDigit hub is my 55 inch LG C10 OLED TV. This is displays my live preview of whatever I'm sending out to the world of whatever I'm streaming goes up here so I know what is happening uh, and being sent out. And now you can see infinite me's on the screen. The other HDMI output goes to this uh, little portable 1080p monitor. This is like my cheat sheet. This tells me what queue is going to be fired next. Uh, so I know exactly where I am uh, in my queue list. Also connected to the CalDigit hub is the Stream Deck and my Ethernet cable, which goes to the Linksys 8 port gigabit Ethernet switcher. I know this looks like a mess, but this switch allows some fun things for my setup. I'll go down the uh, inputs for you. The first input, uh, their first input goes to the internet. The next one goes to the CalDigit hub connected to my computer. The next one goes to my NTech ODE box, uh, which is this blue box right here, which I'll explain later. Uh, the next one goes to my Philips Hue hub, which is right here. Uh, where am I? The next one goes to my ATEM Mini. This one goes to my Oh, this one goes to my A10 Mini. This one goes to my second computer I run Zoom off of. The next one goes to my desk hub. And the last one goes to my PS5. So I just mentioned I had a second computer running Zoom. That is the Acer Nitro 5 laptop. As my setup grew, I was asking a lot more of my Mac and it just couldn't handle it with everything I was throwing at it. So that's when I decided to get a second computer just to run, well, at the time it was Skype and then I switched over to Zoom because it's what everyone's using. So how do I get the video from my PC over to my Mac? I use a technology called NDI. NDI stands for Network Device Interface. Uh, you can find it at ndi.tv and it's completely free. It takes video and it sends it over IP. It sends it over Ethernet, connected Ethernet cable over your local area network. That's one of the reasons why I have the 8-port switch so everything can be hardwired together. I stream my show over YouTube from my Mac and I create a Zoom waiting room from my PC. And anyone that wants to be part of the show on camera and help me out with magic tricks, they go into the Zoom waiting room. And then at random, I just call people in from that waiting room to be part of the show on camera. It's kind of like raising your hand in, in, when you're in person in an audience. You can get called up on stage uh, to be part of the show. Then that video gets sent to my Mac over Ethernet cable using the NDI tools. Okay, are you guys still with me? Leave a comment below if you made it this far. All right, that was the hardware. Let's get into the software. I use Chrome as my browser to stream to YouTube because, you know, Chrome's made by Google and so is YouTube, so they kind of play well together. Then I open the ATEM software control that controls my switcher. I restore my settings and I'm good to go. Then I open OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcasting Software. It's an open source streaming software that does some amazing things. You can build lots of different scenes in here and switch between them as needed. Next is probably my favorite piece of software, QLab from Figure 53. I've been running my in-person Summoning Spirit show off this from the beginning, and this software is the last word in live show control. I run all the show music, pre-recorded video, lighting, and my cue sheet from this. I also control my ATEM Mini switcher and OBS using QLab using OSC commands. This is getting to next level stuff, so uh, bear with me. OSC stands for Open Sound Control. It's a popular way that devices communicate with each other uh, in live show production. I can change scenes in OBS with OSC commands. I can change cameras or mute and unmute my mic with OSC commands as well. To complicate things a little more, all that functionality doesn't get built into the devices and software you're using. That's why you'll need another piece of software to make everything work. And that is where the companion app from bitfocus.io comes in. 
You can create buttons in the app that do different things. You can even make layouts for your Stream Deck and have this app take over your Stream Deck instead of the Stream Deck software. So here's the basic idea. You connect your 8M Mini and OBS to this app using their IP addresses. Then you create buttons in the software and assign an action for that button. This button will switch to camera two. For every button, there is an OSC address. And by sending this address to this app, you'll tell the app to press this button. So I copy this OSC address and paste it into a network queue in QLab and send it. That button gets pressed and the action is executed, which is switching to camera two. It works the same way to change to scenes in QLab. This isn't a tutorial, so if you want to learn this stuff, please dig deeper on your own. This app is free, but they have a donation button. I've donated a few times and it's totally worth it. It's a fantastic app. They deserve all the money they can get. So I just switched over my entire studio from Magician for Non-Believer show to my Summoning Spirit show. Uh, remember that little blue box connected to my Ethernet switcher? That is an Entech ODE. That takes Artnet commands from QLab and uh, translates them to DMX commands. Artnet is an open protocol to control lighting over wired or wireless IP connections. Um, DMX is a uh, protocol that controls lighting over wired connections. Those wires, uh, cables, look like microphone cables, XLR cables, but they're actually five pins instead of three. Uh, you can actually get three pin DMX cables as well. Those are kind of more common with D DJ lighting. QLab is sending ARTnet commands over Ethernet to that ODE box. Then that ODE box is sending DMX commands uh, out of out of it running through a cable over to here which has my Charvet DMX4. This box is fantastic because it allows you to control any regular plug by DMX commands. I have my lamp plugged into number one. Channel two has a light for my close-up scene. Uh, number three has this light over here and number four controls this uh, pendant light. So with the click of a button, not only can I change cameras, I can change lighting scenes so I don't get any lighting spillover, so I get the exact lighting I need for each scene. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is this, my TV. This is my blue screen TV. Here, I'll show you. I will shut off the blue screen. Off the blue screen. On the blue screen off the blue screen, on this blue screen, off the blue screen, on the blue screen. Uh, I could do this all day. So what I did is I found an old TV and uh, I painted the screen blue. I thought of putting an LED TV in here and just taking the screen out, but I knew it wouldn't look exactly the same because of the curve in the TV. And, and so what I did is I have video and images being sent from QLab to the ATEM switcher through that fourth HDMI input. And using the keyer on the switcher, I'm able to superimpose whatever video or image I want from QLab onto the blue screen TV. Okay, the last piece of tech I wanna share with you today is this, gaff tape. Gaff tape holds everything together in here. This stuff is amazing. If you don't have gaff tape in your gear bag, get some. It holds hubs, uh, hubs together, it holds curtains together, it holds things that, anything you need. Wires, they keep them out of place. Uh, 
this gaffer's tape is an essential piece of tech for any show. So that's it. You've seen my entire live stream show setup for both shows. You've seen the cameras, you've seen the microphones, you've seen the lights, you've seen the TV, you've seen the gaff tape. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Maybe you picked up a tip or two for your live stream show or you just really enjoy geeking out with me over tech. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. See you next time.